just like to show you a neat little trick. Um, this wire from the front Y axis proximity sensor, uh, just get a, a glue gun and just apply a little bit inside there, and that's enough to hold that cable for life. clean these bits off after and the same up in here just a little bit hold it there a few seconds for it to go off uh, I'll just bring your attention to one area where the cables come out of the top pair of cable chains and come over this plate to come down and go into the secondary much larger cable chain I find it necessary to put this is a bit of uh, flexible conduit actually that I've cut off and split and put over here to, to run the cables over to stop any chafing on this although this isn't sharp um, you know, over time it may cause a problem. Um, you know, so this is the easy fix and this will stop any chafing problems. Okay, so there is plenty of cable here uh, so there was, there's no shortage of cable uh, in actual fact I think it's the same cable that's provided for the 1515 so there's miles of it uh, it might look a, a jumbled mess at the moment but everyone is labelled so I know exactly what's what so what I'm going to do now is mark out the best position to secure the end of the large cable chain to the bench and bore a oh, something like a two inch hole through the bench so I can run all the cables down through to the location where the control box is going to be. Okay, so I think uh, we'll bring this video to a close now because we've run all the cables now on the actual machine and the bird's nest is down <laughs> underneath there now. Um, but it may look a lot of cables, but uh, if you're methodical about it, you know, it's, it's relatively easy. Um, the two servo motors on the back and their cabling will be put through the uh, hole very similar to this at the back and then run around the 
uh, inside edge underneath to this area uh, in much the same fashion as this. Um, I'm leaving these cables here for now uh, until I, I can, you know, sort of when I'm connecting up and I'm sure everything is, is fine and everything's working okay, I will do something about um, packing these away somewhere. So if you've liked the video today, please like and subscribe. And if you really like what I'm doing, you may consider becoming a patron to the channel because it is the patrons behind the channel that it makes it all work. Allows me to do projects like this uh, because all the machinery that I have in my workshop, you know, I pay for. So sometimes, uh, you know, it gets a little hard. <laughs> okay, then uh, the next video is going to be devoted to. Um, I think I'm going to split it in two halves actually. Uh, the wiring of the actual control box uh, itself. Uh, I'll probably split it into like the VFD and the high powered wiring as in the AC side of it uh, and then uh, the next video will be the DC power supply side and the connecting up of all of the uh, proximity sensors into the controller, into the Mac 3 control board, and also uh, connecting up the drivers into the Mac 3 board. Um, and then the next video after that will be uh, downloading Mac 3 onto a nice fresh computer and then tuning Mac 3 into this machine and I'll show you how to do all that it's just I, I find it a lot easier for you guys to have little short 10 to 15 minute videos uh, and you can go and choose exactly what you want to see or what you want advice I suppose on whether it be, you know, building the chassis part or, you know, building the axes uh, of the machine. It's split up into different videos. Okay then, so until the next video, bye for now.